हेलो एवरीवन टुडे वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस द स्ट्रेटजी फॉर डेंटल एनाटॉमी सो व्हेन इट कम्स टू द सब्जेक्ट्स लाइक डेंटल एनाटॉमी व्हिच आर मोर फैक्ट्स बेस्ड वेयर यू हैव टू रिमेंबर अ लॉट ऑफ न्यूमेरिकल वैल्यूज एंड अ लॉट ऑफ फैक्ट्स आल्सो एंड यू हैव टू रिमेंबर द कैरेक्टरिस्टिक्स ऑफ ईच एंड एवरी टूथ राइट सो दिस बिकम्स इंपॉर्टेंट दैट वी शुड हैव अ क्लियर पाथ ऑफ प्रिपरेशन एज़ वेल एज़ the subject gives you around 6 to 7 questions in the exams like inicet and the uh, the neat exam and nowadays neat is of course uh, shifting towards the conceptual aspects now so uh, one more approach you should take while preparing for dental anatomy is that how can you correlate this basic subject this dental anatomy in your clinics right so a lot of interns must be taking this particular uh, uh, neat also as well as if you are practicing you are drop out also then whatever you read in your uh, dental anatomy how you are applying that in your patient makes a big difference right because now neat is going to ask you the clinical question okay the era has gone when you have to just uh, read the mcq and you will have to go to the uh, exam and just uh, vomit that out so that's not going to do anything now as i have been saying uh, since like since i have been guiding you that uh, now we have to focus on the fundamentals because these exams are going to test your clinical knowledge so before i get into depth of the approach for this dental anatomy i should tell you about the sources of dental anatomy so uh, the source the first thing the recommended book is of course the one wheeler's dental anatomy and physiology but uh, i feel there is a problem this uh, while reading this book because this is a fantabulous book there is no doubt about that but one problem i feel is that there are eight sets of teeth right so starting from your incisors your canines your premolars then molars there are eight different sets of the teeth which you have to deal in depth right now what they do they simply give you central incisors and then they'll be telling you the features of central incisor then later incisors then features of the later incisor so when you have to get the in depth knowledge then this books play a very important role right but for the exams you have to just think the comparisons right so when the subjects is uh, like da and uh, as i have been mentioning again and again it's a fast based subject so when a lot of fact have to be remembered the examiner wants to know the exceptions right so uh, knowing the exceptions to the general behavior makes a very big difference in the competitive exams so how to approach the different characteristics of all the eight sets of teeth what i did or what we uh, basically framed we used the comparison method right so we started comparing the different aspects which are asked in the exam and we have compiled those in the bites and in the bites the comparison is basically given so we are making you think how the question will be asked in your exam so in exam what they ask they ask about some groove right radico palatine groove it was asked in the recent exam then they can ask about the elevations they can ask about the exception in certain uh, cusp or certain uh, ridges right so all these things they can ask so what we are going to do in bites what meritus has done we have just compile all these uh, information from the wheelers and other standard sources as well as there is very much controversies about the chronological period so in according to the indian examination we have compiled and searched the keys and compiled those uh, correct ages which are asked in the indian exams and uh, we have put it in a tabular form so yes now what all aspects we have to remember so just think what all you are going to do in your clinic so keeping in mind the changes the neat is adapting and the exam is of course going to be more conceptual nowadays so what we have done we have uh, divided our syllabus in the tasks so uh, you can have the important topics as tasks and of course you can read the attached bites to those topics and then you can uh do the mcqs on those topics so we have the bites covering these topics as well as the very good 
set of mcqs has been there uh, has been given so that you can master at least these topics because these are frequently repeated and the questions are expected from these topics mostly so uh, again when you are doing any of the tasks you will have to correlate that with your clinical practice so that will give you more fruitful result as well as you'll be able to retain that particular information for a longer duration of time so uh let's see what are the different tasks the first thing which we have to remember is the deciduous dentition and in the deciduous dentition we should know the anatomy of the deciduous dentition as well as you should know the chronology of the deciduous dentition so you can think like that a pediatric patient comes to your clinic you should be able to estimate the age of the patient or you should be able to know uh, any discrepancies which is happening due to the eruption timing of that particular uh, uh in the in that particular patient another thing that you can think suppose some patient is coming to you with a complaint of a uh, delayed eruption or no eruption of certain teeth and you know that if you know the uh, chronology of the deciduous dentition so you can be more uh, affirmly tell the patient and convince the patient that yes this is normal and this is the range in which the tooth generally comes so this is how you can uh, imagine and you can practice your anatomy and chronology of the deciduous dentition then comes the anatomy of the permanent dentition and this year also there were almost five to six questions which were asking uh, which were asked uh, on this particular topic right then you should know the difference between the permanent and the primary dentition and most importantly chronology of the permanent dentition where uh, at least one question is being asked in all kind of dental examination at least one question is asked and that can be of course direct or indirect in case of age estimation then you should know the time of the calcification and eruption of that particular teeth we'll discuss about the occlusion a uh, little later before that i must tell you the different aspects on which the questions are asked so uh, as it's given in the wheelers that uh, one tooth is given and all characteristics are there then the second tooth was given and all the characteristics are there but uh, as uh, I keep telling that exceptions become important in uh, the uh, subjects like DA where a lot of information is there and those exceptions are generally asked because these are more retained by examiner as well as the students right so uh, the important topics are dimensions so you should be knowing the dimension of the largest tooth or smallest tooth largest root or smallest root right then any abnormal angulation you should be familiar with and you should know the shape of all the teeth in the oral cavity so there can be uh, the trapezoidal shape there can be so all the shape basically you should be able to know so there was a question this time also an image based question on the first permanent mandibular molar so you should be able to know there are three buccal cusp and there are two lingual cusp in that and the distal cusp is smallest that's how you can find out the uh, side as well as the shape of the tooth then there are questions which are asked on the elevations basically the cusp and the marginal ridges and all then the depressions the grooves and the fossas and all and the embrasures and when the examiner wants to test you thoroughly they can ask about the contact points so generally names they ask about the contact points also then of course classification of dentition and tooth numbering system now this is something which we have to just cram so uh, in need they generally ask about the classification of dentition they talk about the haplodont and all so that thing you have to remember then dentaceous structures and tmj now tmj is fetching at least one question either from the dental anatomical aspect or from the oral surgery aspect or from the uh, histological aspect at least one question is being asked so this year also one question was asked right then you should be familiar with the image based question so you should be familiar with the images of all the two teeth in the oral cavity now coming back to the occlusion how you are going to relate this occlusion in your uh, dental uh, practice also or the clinical practice also you should be knowing that so basically while we are dealing with the occlusion of course we are seeing the occlusions basically secondly we are more focused on the equilibration so what is this equilibration basically this is something when you do the patient in your clinic 
and uh, suppose patient complains of the high point so you should know which particular tooth or which particular part of the tooth has to be reduced so the equilibration in occlusion to get the stable occlusion helps you there so this becomes a very important clinical topic where from where the question can be fetched and where from the where the question can be framed by the faculties because this becomes very important in your clinical practices also if you have any other doubts pertaining to the preparation for dental anatomy please comment in the comment box below we'll surely reply you if you found this video helpful please like and share this video and subscribe the channel hit the bell icon to get notified for newer videos thank you